The content of this podcast is based on medical fact and evidence-based practice from credible authoritative sources, but is not a substitute for your institution's policies, procedures, common sense, or good judgment. The views and opinions are those of Eric Bauer and Flight Bridge Ed in their entirety. Hey everybody, Eric Beck with you. Today's podcast is going to be a podcast that I've been thinking about for quite some time. I've received many emails over the years on just ideas uh, that I could give to people on maybe ways to stay motivated, how I stay motivated, how I continually push forward with content, how I learn content, how I study for content, different things like that. And I think um, over... Uh, quite a long period of time. I've just written down notes and um, received an email a few months back that inspired me to come up with these five areas that I want to talk about. So the podcast is called The Rage, and I named it The Rage because I truly believe that to do the job that we all do, you have to have this rage inside of you. And that rage from the standpoint of this podcast is a rage that's going to allow me to continually drive forward to continually learn. Uh, and, and so I named it the rage, five pillars of mastery. What are the five pillars that I perceive that have helped me continually learn and continually be successful? Now, this is not all encompassing. There's obviously a lot of people behind the scenes. There are people that have invested in me. There are so many things that have helped me along the way, but these are more internal drivers that I have identified in myself that have helped me uh, move forward consistently. So number one, stoke the fire. Obviously, if you have a fire, you know, you go camping, you have a fire, we got to continually stoke that fire, we got to add fuel to that fire. And you yourself, your brain is no different. And so there's a few things that I want to point out there. The two areas that I constantly stay honest about with myself is number one, I have to have a fear. I have to have a fear of not knowing. That fear of not knowing needs to drive me to master whatever that fear is. So I have to have a fear that I'm not going to understand a piece of equipment. If that's the ventilator, if that's a cardiac monitor, if that's a balloon pump, whatever it may be. You need to identify in yourself an area of weakness and then have a fear that that area weakness is going to cause you to not be able to make a good decision with your patient because ultimately we owe that to our patients. That fear also has to continuously drive me to stay curious. And that curiosity is going to drive me to, to understand things in a broader way, have a greater perspective. And so really the curiosity and the fear go hand in hand. One of the things that I read a long time ago is you don't study because it's important. You study because it makes you happy. There has to be a level of gratification. And I think that that statement goes right along with the curiosity and the fear of not understanding. Ultimately, you got to stoke the fire. You have to continually find methods, information that you can easily digest. Every one of us learns differently whether that's an auditory method, a kinesthetic method, which is the majority, or visual, think of ways that you can retain information, stay curious, have that fear. All right, let's go to number two. You have to be humble enough to understand what you don't know. I'm going to say it again. Understand what you don't know. And that is only going to come when you are humble enough to understand that. It is absolutely all right if you're in a group of people that are your peers. If you're asked a question or you don't know something to ask somebody to explain it or be humble enough to say, I don't know. So how do we do that? Number one, listen. A lot of times we try to over talk people. We try to say too much especially when we're 
in an uncomfortable situation where we, we feel like we don't know, we try to talk and talk and talk. And a lot of times if you'll just sit back and listen, a lot of, a lot of questions that are, that are coming into your mind will be answered if you just sit there and evaluate and listen to what's going on around you. You have to also understand your perspective. And I don't think I understood that fully until I moved away from Oregon and started traveling around the United States, that there are so many variations in EMS, so many variations in HEMS programs, whether you're just talking from the United States to the European countries, Australia, Asia, there is a mass difference in how things are done. And that is, is really good to have a wide range of understanding. And that's where you have to understand your perspective. If you've never been out of your area or your comfort level is based on a small little bubble that you've always worked in, your perspective is very, very small. And that's where you have to be humble enough to understand what you know is only based on your bubble. And so that is where social media, that's where FOMED has really broadened our ability to get information out. And that was the driving force of the Flatbridge Ed podcast back in 2011. So number one, stoke the fire. Number two, understand what you don't know. Number three, work when others are sleeping. I know that there are many different variations in how people handle getting up early, staying up late. I have always been somebody that gets up early and I go to bed, you know, fairly early. Um, I know that doesn't work for everybody, but I truly do believe that there is something about getting up early and rising early. Rise early. Don't be afraid to put in the work. Don't ever hesitate to outwork somebody else. Understand that time management is huge. Have to have to know your own capabilities, your own um you know, environment and, and time is, is huge. Now that was one way that I realized early on that I had so much going on, getting up early and getting a few hours work done before any meeting started was huge for me in being productive and staying ahead of the curve. Ultimately, you have to understand that the early bird does get it done. It is a choice. Yeah, sometimes it sucks to get up early. But there is a lot of productivity that can happen early in the morning. Again, you may be completely different and you do the best work at night after your family goes to bed and and that is fine. You have to ultimately find a system that is going to work for you uh, that fits your personality, fits how you are as a person. Number four, do small things in great ways. I think when we look at tasks, we look at a career, you look at school, whatever it, it may be, sometimes those, those look really huge to you. They are monumental. You know, think about going to med school and you're like, oh my gosh, I got to go to four years of undergrad and then I got to go four years of med school and then holy cow, I'm going to do a surgical residency and that's going to be another five years. And then I'm going to have to do a fellowship after that. You know, you're, you're looking at 15 years. Uh, Plus, and so those are huge monumental elephants in front of you. And so those large tasks, you can break those down into smaller areas. Make small little successes out of large goals. And that's where you have to break those up into those smaller chunks. I think that is something I've done is I've looked at things that look massive in front of me and I've tried to make those small. If it's making it a day by day or say, you know what, I'm going to get through this week and then I'm going to get through the next week and the next week. And then before you know it, you're, you're done, you're completed. And you realize that the massive elephant in front of you was not that bad and you were successful. I think our mind can definitely play tricks on us and our mind can be our biggest advocate. It can be our biggest, um, you know, fuel to push forward, but it can also be a hindrance. And again, that's based on your makeup. If you have 
you know, anxiety about things already, and you look at a task in front of you and you realize, holy, there's no way possible I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, you can talk yourself out of it and you may be very easily successful in that goal, but you are not even giving yourself a chance to do it. So try to make those tasks, those goals, whatever it is, make them small in your mind, make them small as far as successes. Number five, I love this. Don't talk about it, be about it. I think a lot of times we can easily talk and say we're going to do something. Um, you can boast, but do you fall through? And I think every one of us, including myself, it's really easy to fall into this trap. Sometimes you're not meaning to. Sometimes you may look at this from just a, a conversational standpoint that you're just talking. Different people, based on perspective, based on, based on personality, takes that completely different. And so what I would say is let your actions speak. Anybody can talk about it. Success is achieved by doing and following through. And so I'm going to leave you with this. And this is going to move into and seg in, segue into another podcast. But I want you to think about this statement, aim to be a zero. Again, this is the rage, five pillars of mastery. I hope this is something that you can use day in and day out to help move you through your different goals, your different aspirations. Again, if you have any ideas, any topics you want me to cover, please email me at eric.bauer at flabbergedcom and I will talk to you soon. Tired of boring Zoom conferences? Fast 21 will bring the latest technology in the virtual environment to ensure you have the most amazing experience possible. This year's program will take place May 11th and 12th, and with the same world-class speakers you've come to expect at the Fast Symposium, Fast 21 Virtual will blow you away. Networking, small group discussions, a complete vendor experience, and more. Go to fastsymposium.com to secure your Fast Pass now. This has been a production of the Flight Bridge Ed Podcast, leading the way in pre-hospital critical care and emergency medicine education.